Now to prepare for this epic drop of a game that is the Resident Evil 3 remake, I figured I'd go through the OG one last time, but I'd be rolling it as a challenge playthrough. But Metamonger, how do you know the remake will be any good? I hear the masses screaming at a level of volume louder than the volcanic eruption of Krakatoa already. And to that I say, don't ask me where I keep my crystal ball. My challenge, should I accept it, is to play through the game, but the only weapon I can use to put down my enemies is the shotgun. But there's a catch. Much like our good friend the bubonic plague, I'm slippery and took to the comment section of my last video to see that a good number of you enjoyed my choice of words regarding the pew pew and the boom boom. Well for this challenge, my shotgun won't be going pew pew anymore. No. It's transformed into full boom boom, baby. Here on the Horoscope channel, we do deep dives into game mechanics trying to see what kind of strange and unusual things we can get to occur in-game when we break the order of sequences, or when we sing a swan song for a raven that lets us go beyond what the game was meant to have happen. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to check out the other videos on the channel, and let's push forward into the unknown. Right out the gate, I Usain Bolt it in the direction of the shotgun, and use one of the best mechanics of this game to my advantage, and that is noping out of an area to reset where the enemies are. Like an unquarantined NBA athlete, I blow past the two zombies on the steps only to be fouled multiple times by the last zombie guarding my precious. Once I get that cold steel in my hands, believe me when I say, someone's gonna pay. I must conserve my ammo, as you don't find shotgun rounds lying around as often as you do the handgun rounds. So basically, I'm trying to stash as many rounds as I have toilet paper and only shoot enemies when necessary. Throughout this you see me get mad stacks of herbs as I'm not invincible while going through this playthrough, so the heals are needed. As you can see this stranger gives me the creeper back massage and puts me in the yellow just to prove my point. Now under normal circumstances with this Brad situation, I would come in guns blazing to help slay the zombie that just attacked him, but things are different. Yeah, there you go. So in between the cuts, the one thing that you don't see, and I'll admit to right now, is that while running this I pulled up a few web pages telling me where every case of shotgun ammo and gunpowder is located along with the mixing chart for the gunpowders. Armed with this information I was able to project, much like the rate of infection of the common flu, how many enemies I would be able to put down between getting more rounds of the pew pew turned boom boom. I dodge as many enemies as possible in the beginning as I only have so many shots, and I don't count this against the challenge when I shoot this barrel to kill all the zombies because it was the shotgun that I used to trigger the explosion. You see me check my ammo as I decide to smoke this one last zombie just so I can safely get to that sweet sweet red herb beyond her. The zombie dogs were constantly trying to spill over their Ebola to me. Luckily in my situation, plants that grow in the back alleys of Raccoon City seem to clear this up. In this first save room I knew I would receive my first B grade pew pew dust which would give me an unknown number of boom boom projectiles. After consulting the powder scriptures, I throw down on my stockpile of hand sanitizer and arm myself with more purifying capability. The least worrying thing about this whole challenge was Nemesis to be honest, only because I knew where every engagement of him would occur, and if he were a disease I definitely had all the cowbell needed to clear him up. Pushing through the police station I conserved where I could and dispensed justice where the frustration took over. Seriously at this moment, I felt like turning everything off and not turning anything back on. My second date with Nemesis went just as smooth as the first one. He eats too much and falls asleep on the floor while I steal his shiny wallet full of gun parts. And it's at this moment when I leave the police station after collecting all the key items needed to move forward in the game that I knew I was about to break this challenge. If I would have proceeded without backtracking at all, I would have been hard pressed to save as much ammo as possible and reserving my shots would most definitely be in order. But I decided to stroll back to the beginning of the game and visit the area where this whole thing originated from. Dario's box of pew pew supplies. We all know what's in there and thus it leaves me thick with the boom boom. I even went back into the police station to get some powder I realized I missed as I was skimming the locations of where my next source of justice powder was located. I still play it conservatively with the dogs as I too am a straight G, but honestly, they're just hard to shoot with a rocket, er, I mean boom boom infused shotgun. It was at this moment when I crafted enough shotgun ammo for the guidelines of this challenge to no longer matter. Wielding over 50 rounds of one shot kills made all the enemies in game dull boys from here moving forward. The only challenging part came much further down the road when Carlos, much like Jesus, had to take the wheel due to Jill becoming bedridden after her most recent date with Nemesis. The reason it was difficult was because Carlos lacks the boom boom stick, which is the only thing we're allowed to kill enemies with. So I bit the boom and decided to attempt this section of the game with killing no enemies at all. At first, everything seemed fine. I only had one moment where I went full Rambo for about two seconds before realizing I wasn't allowed to kill anything and I was able to avoid most of the enemies with extreme social distancing aptitude. 
Can we please talk about Nikolai getting straight yeeted out of this window? He can go be a supervisor in the Shadow Realm after that invasive full body glass treatment. I'm one of the supervisors. That's all you need to know. And can we please talk about this safe hidden behind a painting? Like, do they have to push that tray onto that spot on the floor every time they want to get into it? What is the hospital's cost on replacing that photo every time it breaks simply because someone needs to add to their secret stash? Ridiculous. My first problem came when I encountered the Hunter Betas in such close proximity. Dodging could be done, but I felt like I was a Twitch streamer being recruited by Mixer with the way these things were jumping all over me. So I broke the rules and killed these two Betas, because that's what cold-hearted drug lords do. I'm going to fast forward the footage, but I just wanted to share it with everyone the level of duh I was while doing this puzzle. Tired, dazed, and busy snacking out of my mind, watch me struggle. But don't make fun, because that's rude. I run from what I can and shoot what I must. The total being six beta hunters, and I managed to escape the hospital with my legs barely attached. My first death comes from the big boy himself, Nemesis, who pulls a fast one on me catching me off camera and delivering his special move to my already shattered flesh mech. The second time I get so close to getting back to Jill and Nemesis quickscopes me from the windows. And I'm not going to lie, it made me scream a little. The only way I was going to make it to Jill was I needed to be at least medium health to be able to outrun Nemesis. So I had to break my rule again and put down some spiders en route to Jill just so I would be able to run away from Nemesis. My vengeance was swift and far reaching. After taking care of Nemesis, we were back to our regularly scheduled programming of watching Jill smoke fools with a boom boom stick who are looking to front on her. Nothing in the park offers a challenge and I make the gravedigger wish he would have stayed six feet under. Everything plays out as you would expect with someone who has more individual one hit kill shots than there are enemies at this point in the game and I make this dead factory live up to its name. When trying to give Nemesis his acid bath, I found it impossible to trigger the spouts with my altered slapstick. So I resorted to making Nemesis offer up his strong hand in an attempt to operate this self-serve shower. This proved harder than the strategy guide demonstrated, so I ended up just melting Nemesis with my blunderbuss of boom boom and went on my way. In the final fight of the game, I still wanted to use the railgun to finish off the last form of Nemesis, as the railgun is the pinnacle of boom. I remember this fight being so much harder when I was younger, but now that I have my adult eyes I can see. But where we're going, we won't need eyes to see. To anyone who understands, we're best friends now. As this final fight plays out, it turns out Jill makes me fail the challenge on the last enemy in the last few seconds of the game. Via pulling out that revolver and delivering the cheesiest line ever second only to Leon's dialogue in Resident Evil 4, then putting Nemesis down for the final time. You want stars? I'll give you stars. If they don't keep this line in the remake, I'll demand a refund, as you should too. So, this brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this content, would you kindly consider subscribing to the channel as we have a lot more ground to cover and I'd like for you to tag along for the ride. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Yong out.